Total War Rome 2 proved everyone wrong. It proved everyone wrong when it released and it was a disaster. Then it proved everyone wrong again a year later when it shaped up into a good game, despite claims that it would be the death of the franchise. Then it proved Creative Assembly wrong when they tried to abandon it for Total War Attila, but the player base never left. Time and time again, people have discounted, derided, and attacked this game, but so far, nothing has been able to take it down. Six Total War games have been released on PC since then, but for almost eight years now, Rome 2 has remained in the top three most played on Steam. What's Rome 2's secret that's allowed it to have such a long reign? A reign that, by the way, may finally be coming to an end. In an ironic twist of fate, the only thing that might finally kill Rome 2 is Rome 1. But before we say goodbye to this titan of a game, I want to explore and appreciate how this often maligned title has remained so popular with so many for so long. Before we can begin, we need to address the elephant in the room. Don't worry, I'm not going to dwell on it for too long, but it needs to be said. Rome 2 had a dumpster fire of a launch. Let's just say to the Cyberpunk 2077 fans, we understand your pain. Trust me. There was a YouTuber by the name of Reynald Sanity who made a video called Sane Critique Why Rome 2 Failed, and it was cathartic to say the least. He articulated what we were all feeling at the time, the disappointment, the anger. CA's misleading marketing before the game's launch had deceived us bad. The infamous Siege of Carthage demo, the completely baseless boasts about how advanced the AI would be. <laughs> he brilliantly laid out where it all went wrong, and how it failed not to just live up to the hype, but even to just surpass Rome 1. To this day, 20 patches later, there are still some things that Rome 1 does better than Rome 2, and we'll touch on those a bit later. A year and a dozen patches after the game's initial launch, they rebranded it as Emperor Edition and dropped a free DLC campaign pack set during the second triumvirate. By that time, the game was light years ahead of its launch date. But also by that time, CA had announced Total War Attila, and it wasn't going to be an expansion pack like Barbarian Invasion was for Rome 1, oh no. It was going to be a separate game. Now I've already made a video on why this was a huge mistake that doomed Attila to failure, which you can find on the screen now and in the description box down below. The long story short though, is that the game had features we wanted in Rome 2, locked behind a $45 paywall that wasn't backwards compatible with Rome 2. Also, it was set during a period far fewer people were interested in, and people were still rightfully bitter about Rome 2's release a year prior. All this combined led to a game that was starved of players, and therefore starved of support from CA. Attila was out, but people were still playing Rome 2. CA would later all but admit this was a blunder, by tasking their Sophia studio to go back and create more DLC for Rome 2, years after Attila's launch. And boy am I glad they did. CA Sophia was the best thing to happen to Rome 2, full stop. Their three DLCs, Empire Divided, Desert Kingdoms, and Rise of the Republic, all came alongside meaty patches that added in much requested features like a family tree, a political system that made sense, and more graphic settings to enable, including proper multi-sample anti-aliasing. Everyone says that Emperor Edition saved Rome 2, but for me, it was CA Sophia and their three DLCs that did it. They put soul into a game that desperately needed it. So why is Rome 2 still so popular despite all this rocky history? Well, the first and probably the most important reason is the setting. The setting is so important for a game's success. It's the environment within which we give context to everything that we're doing. Without a good setting, you can still have a good game, but with a good setting, a good game becomes great. Take a game like Skyrim. The actual land of Skyrim, the Nordic influences, the wispy snow-capped mountains, the lush forests, all of these things add character to the game. They support everything it's trying to do. It's a world that begs the player to explore every nook and cranny of it, to get lost in seemingly endless chains of side quests. Would Skyrim be as popular as it is if it was set in a tropical setting? Or an arid desert setting? I don't know. But there's something about Skyrim where every time you load in, you just feel like you're home. 
and Rome 2 has that same feeling, at least for me. Classical Antiquity is possibly the best setting for a Total War game. I know many people will disagree, many will say Medieval is the best setting for a game like this, and believe me, I will play the hell out of a Medieval 3. The Medieval period's the first era of history that I fell in love with as a kid after playing Age of Empires 2. Needless to say, I have a soft spot for the Middle Ages. So why Classical Antiquity then? Classical Antiquity has an important advantage over the Medieval period, and that advantage is unfamiliarity. If we look at a map of Europe in the Near East in 1000 AD-ish, much of it is remarkably recognizable despite being a thousand years old. The polities of England, France, Hungary, Poland, the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, Christendom, the Islamic Middle East, all of this is instantly recognizable to our modern eyes. But a map of that same region in 218 BC? Almost none of it is recognizable today. Classical antiquity is so far removed from our modern world that it almost feels fantastical. The ancient Greeks and their famous Olympian gods that everyone in the world knows. The Egyptians still following their pantheon of gods as old as human civilization itself. The Carthaginians, descendants of Phoenician sailors who rose to greatness out of the ashes of the Bronze Age collapse. Alexander the Great. Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, it's an era of gods and heroes where legends were born, lived, and died. This period is the last hurrah of the ancients, themselves reaching out and making their mark on the world one last time. A conclusion to stories, some of which began back in the earliest days of River Valley civilizations. There are so many diverse cultures with their philosophies, technologies, religions, and fighting styles all colliding during these 500 years in an epic showdown before disappearing from the world forever. The same way a massive star shines brightest at the end of its long life before it too vanishes into the abyss. In Rome 1, playing as the Gauls feels remarkably different from playing as the Greeks. Now Rome 2 shares this same strength, but it leans even harder into it by offering more cultures to choose from, such as the Desert Kingdoms for example, and more factions to choose from within those cultures. This era offers unprecedented levels of faction diversity, so it's no surprise that Rome 2 has more variety in its unit design than any Total War game save the Warhammer titles. This is an enormous advantage that Rome 2 has over titles like Three Kingdoms, Shogun 2, and both Saga titles. Even if the unit classes like Medium Swordsmen, Heavy Spearmen, and Light Cavalry, for example, are all shared amongst the factions, the various flavor texts, skills, stats, and skins help provide immersion and a feeling of diversity which increases replayability. Total War has always had a toy soldier appeal to it, bringing joy to people who just love watching their troops march around and fight, and there are many armies to march around with and fight with in this game. Rome 2's second great strength is its breadth of content. This game is packed with content. It has seven different campaign scenarios, each with their own factions, characters, mechanics, and victory conditions. So many big moments of this wonderful era are playable in Rome too. From the Peloponnesian War, to the earliest days of the Roman Republic, to the cataclysmic showdown between Rome and Carthage, the wars of the Diadochi, Caesar's conquest of Gaul, the civil war between Octavian, Antony, and Lepidus, and the crisis of the third century. There are so many interesting starting positions and cool enemies to fight. Aside from Warhammer, it's pretty much the king of content. And the final piece of the puzzle, of course, is the mods. And this is where the video gets a bit personal. Rome 2 has an amazing modding community, and there are literally thousands of interesting mods on the workshop to try. This is the reason I've been able to put 2,000 hours into this game. It's the first game I really got stuck into and learned how to make mods for. We can fix most of the issues with the game with a couple of clicks on the workshop. Mods like Divity et Impera, Radius, Wars of the Gods all offer new, interesting hours of gameplay. This game's modding community inspired me to make videos on YouTube again. That's essentially what this channel is all about, a celebration of Total War mods and its modders. Anyone who's been playing video games for a few years knows that some games are just special. 
I'm sure you can relate. Some people have more than one of these, oftentimes games from their childhood. Ocarina of Time, RuneScape, Age of Empires, Minecraft, and yes, Total War. Games that are like listening to an old song. They just take you away to a different time. Rome 2 is one of those games for me. My life has changed a lot in the time since the game's release, but Rome 2 has never gotten stale. Playing it in 2021 takes me right back to 2013, racing my friends to be the first to win on Legendary, sharing stories about our campaigns, our victories, and our defeats. Despite joining the military, moving across the country, and playing dozens of other games since its release, I always come back to Rome 2. It's not the deepest or the best Total War game by any means. Its characters lack the RPG emergent storytelling of Rome 1's characters, the user interface is just bad, and it's generally way too easy. There are plenty of valid criticisms of Rome 2, and if any of them are deal breakers for you, then that's okay. Everyone has their unique tastes. There are plenty of people who dislike Skyrim, who deride it as a casual game that's inferior to its predecessors and barely worthy of being called an RPG. Skyrim is kept alive by a combination of mods, content, and a setting that feels like home to thousands of players. And I believe Rome 2 owes its enduring success to those reasons as well. And while Rome Remastered may finally put this game to rest, Total War Rome 2 proved everyone wrong before, and it might just do so again. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and comment down below which games you always find yourself coming back to. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Total War Rome 2 content as well as Total War Rome Remastered content. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.